As you can see behind my table is my reveal wall. I sell all of my images uh, already printed and finished. You give me one camera with a good lens and you give me one girl, then I could make $3,000 a day. I've spent my life mastering my craft and I want to honour it by making beautiful portraits that are worth being paid and you're worth being paid. Rachel, thanks so much for inviting us into your studio. It's just been such an experience to learn about all the things that you do, from families to newborns. One of the things that is so important, I know, especially for photographers, is the consultation, and not enough of them actually do a consultation. Right. And you've told me just in our brief conversations how important it is to your business process and your model. Um, we, oh, let's discuss it. How important is it, especially to the sale, to the you know educating the client, to planting that seed, Help us here. <laughs> it's everything. Um, if we don't have a consultation, uh, it just it starts the process, the whole process from start to beginning, and that consultation sets everything in motion. So it needs to happen uh, with all of our avenues, um, with the high school seniors, with the newborns, and with the families. Do you do them all in person? We do all consultations in person when we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some out-of-town clients. Uh, we'll do by phone if necessary, mm -hmm. uh, but we try not to do that if we can at all get them into the studio because, well, when you walked in, the first thing that you saw what we're about is, is wall decor. Yeah. Um, and so them seeing that and seeing what we're about and seeing the different styles of portraits, that is so important if we can get them into the studio and, and the way we designed it so that... Yeah. It's about them, and, yeah. and all of that in the beginning, just setting that stage, um, carries on through the rest of the process and the relationship. I was going to ask, how do you get them to come in? I mean, so many photographers say to me, oh, I could never get my clients to actually come in for a consultation. How do you do that? That's an interesting question. <laughs> we don't have an issue with that. Um, really? Okay. I don't know. That's interesting. Is it just I'm, I'm trying to think maybe what do we, what do, we do that, yeah. that does. I think it is. It's just, it's part of what we do. Uh, there's no question, there's no can you, it's we need to first set you up for a consultation and at that point we will schedule your session. So we don't, we don't schedule anything with them before the consultation, maybe that's part of it too, is mm -hmm. that we are unable to move forward until we have a consultation and that's how we approach it. So we tell our clients, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to schedule your consultation. Uh, that's when you're going to come in and we're going to plan the session. We're going to figure out what location. We have locations from very rustic to very manicured to wide open spaces. So there's a lot of different styles and looks to fit our client's style and their homes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we tell them that's the first thing is they'll need to come in and us sit down and, and decide where we want to go. For the newborns, we want to talk about color palettes and, and let them look at the blankets and props that we have here on hand. So it's almost a, a requirement that they come into the studio. Um, I mean, we don't say it's required, but it's, it's expected. It's, it's expected. Yeah. Um, and we tell them at that time, we'll look at our calendars together. We'll find a date that works for both of us and we'll get their order appointments scheduled as well. Um, so we tell them, be sure to have everybody in the family schedule on hand, kind of knowing when they're available yeah. and when they're not. Um, and then we'll, we'll be able to talk through some of the prices and products here as well when you're, when you're here, talk about clothing and get everything set and ready to go. I was going to say, as a business owner and f you know, with the sale in mind, what is your top goal in the pre-consultation? And is it more for you or is it more for the client? I think it's both. Uh, one is, especially with our newborn clients, we tell them it's so important for them to meet us first. Uh, the, they need to feel comfortable with us and meet us. And um, even with the seniors, we want to meet them first so it's not showing up to a session, hi, I'm your photographer today. Yeah. Um, it just makes the session so much more comfortable when you recognize faces out on yeah. a location and you see them and it's, hey, hey, you know, good <laughs> to see you guys again. Instead of it being like awkwardly, okay, here's our introductions yeah. and now we've got to jump right into shooting and they don't know what to expect um, or what to prepare for. And also, so they have an expectation in mind. Uh, we don't do multiple outfits with, with our families. Uh, we do about four <laughs> is our goal with with uh, seniors, maybe five max. Um, and we tell them here, you know, choose these outfits and here's why. If we even narrow down to 10 images per outfit and you do four or five, we're at 40 That's or 50 images. images for yeah. you to narrow down, which is very difficult to do. Uh, and so we kind of get all that established at the pre-session pre consultation. Um, so it's important for them 
because they feel comfortable and they know what to expect and they're prepared and they're excited. It's important for us because we lay the groundwork for our process and what we're going to do. So when they come in for the session, they know what's going to happen. They know what we're, we're, we're shooting for. Um, and then when they come in for the order appointment, they know they're coming in for an order appointment. They know that's when we're making final decisions. So that's when all pr decision makers need to be present. That's when they should probably schedule to have sitters mm -hmm. if at all possible. And we say it delicately, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, we love kiddos, obviously. We love children and all, um, but if there's a way that you can, you know, make other arrangements for them so that you can focus, you know, so that you can make some big decisions because we're talking about doing home decor. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we get all that established in the beginning. Um, we also go through a process based on our, our locations and everything, and our policies, and get all those things ironed out so there's no questions because the mistakes happen when there's questions. When mm -hmm. things are left untied, that's when something, the draw, ball gets dropped. And we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure everybody's on board, knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I can kind of take you through a little bit of a process of a consultation. I would love that. And uh, kind of give you step that. by step. We'll kind of go more into the families because one of the things I want to talk about is locations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, we offer a lot of styles and you, for our families. So in the pre-session -consulta pre consultation, was one, one of the things that you do do is pick a location, correct? Yes, correct. So how do you go through that process with a client? Like you said, you have a lot of different options. So we do you ask their style? Do you kind of figure them out yourself and then you decide? How does that of work? All of the above. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do ask what kind of, what their home style is. And uh, we asked them, is it more rustic? You know, do you have a more traditional home? Do you have a more, you know, elegant type of style of home? And then based on what they respond, if they say we're very eclectic and we have a lot of colors and we have, you know, sort of a, a, a lot of things going on, something like some colorful downtown walls may be more of their style. Mm -hmm. um, if we have somebody that lives on a ranch style home, uh, they, you know, they, they're out with horses, they own horses somewhere like a wide open hay field or a rustic barn, that would be something we would recommend for them. And then we would pull those locations, some samples to show them, but we would guide them based on what style their personality and what mm -hmm. style they tell us their home is. Um, and then of course we talk about clothing and the color tones in their home. Um, so that will all kind of come together as I go through a process if we want to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before we do that though, I really wanted to ask you what you think the psychological impact of a pre-consultation is on, on the client. Aside from just building that relationship from the get-go, um, it also prepares them, like I said, through the whole thing, so there's no questions. They're not coming in not knowing they're going to order. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's this problem we have had years ago where somebody would come in and think it was a viewing. Mm -hmm. They just came in mm -hmm. to see them. They just came to, to visit. Them. Yeah. They came to visit their <laughs> portraits, and then they would come back and visit them later. Um, yeah. And that's when we would run into questions like, can, I, can we see these online? Can we, you know? And, and our sales would just drastically drop mm -hmm. um, if we did that. Mm -hmm. Now we have all the expectations laid out and, and everybody's ready to go and on board. And Do you think that, that session consultation increases your sales? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, we, we do use ProSelect um, for our sales. And uh, in the consultation, we talk to them. They have homework and their, one of their homework assignments is to send us images from there around the home. Yeah. Um, and of course, I tell them if they can send that to me before the session, not before the order, but before the session, it helps me know what to shoot. Because mm -hmm. if we're working with a family of five people and they are wanting to put a main piece in an entryway that's a, a panoramic vertical, I need to be prepared for that because yeah, I definitely. need to shoot that. You know, with, with families of five or six, I'm going to probably shoot more horizontals, more panoramas. Yeah horizontally, not vertically. <laughs> so, and I've let them know, you know, we've run into that before. So if they can send those images beforehand, uh, that's, that's huge on knowing what to prepare for them. It so also that allows you to see the color tones of the home. Yes. You know, if there's yes. splashes of red everywhere and they haven't told you that, you're going to be able to incorporate that into the portrait. Exactly. So yeah. it, it really helps us all around for them to, to come to the consultation, be prepared, know what to do, do their yeah. homework, which is the home images. <laughs> and uh, signing the policies and all online. So yeah, take us through what a, a pre-session okay. consultation would be like. All right, so we'll first we'd chit chat, like we've been doing. Like we've been doing, <laughs> I'm your client, nice, yes. cool. First we'd ask, you know, what style of home would uh -huh. you, how would you describe your home? You yeah. know, we'd give them some examples because you might get a glazed look if you just yeah. ask them a random question like that. And most people don't know the difference between Northwest contemporary and traditional or rustic. Right. right? They all think it's the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we will throw out some examples. So would you say you're, you know, and, and if they still glaze over, it's great to ask them where they shop. 
you know, would you say you shop more at uh, Pottery Barn? You know, uh -huh. would you say you shop more at Pier One? So uh -huh. knowing kind of for your home decor, knowing where they shop, are you Kirkland's? Are you Pottery Barn? Are uh -huh. you, that will help a lot yeah. because we know more of their style. If they're more laid back, if they like more of the intricate, you know, decor and uh -huh. things like that. And if they tell you that they're a flea market antique shopper, you're going to, it's totally different than like Crate Ex Barrel or something like exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. Or, or Pier One or something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that does help us tremendously on the process. That's when I would say, for example, if you said we have a very rustic home, yeah. um, you know, we have a lot of, um, <laughs> we'll go to one extreme, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of cowhide and uh, bear rugs and <laughs> yeah. deer on the wall, you know, if that's, I mean, we are in Oklahoma. So <laughs> if that is, if that's the case, we would straight up say, something woodsy would be something we would recommend mm -hmm. um if you have you know horses if you're out or, or if, you're, yeah. if you have horses or, or cattle we recommend maybe going to an old barn um an old country road uh so we'd throw out a couple of options and then we would go in and look at a couple of samples and pinpoint which one they're drawn towards okay so then we would say okay well that is a morning location or that's an evening location um so we're going to need to look at the calendar and, and sync that up because we do go to certain locations at mm -hmm. certain times. And, and if the kids are older or younger, that's gonna play a big part into it too. Yes, it? when we have little ones, we often do morning appointments okay. um, because they're better in the mornings, we've noticed. Um, late in the day. The witching hour <laughs> that kicks in with yeah. kids. Yeah, usually it's not <laughs> the best time to do it right before sunset. They're tired, they're hungry, they're yeah. cranky. Uh, so we try not to do those sessions in the evening and we would encourage them to choose one of the morning or that's what we would straight up mm -hmm. recommend. I would love it if you would take us through like how a consultation works. I mean, I'm, I know I'm a photographer too, but right. it might not be an exact replica, but at least we can kind of see your process and it would really give us an opportunity to, to hone that in for our own studios. Absolutely. Well, so we've established the location that they love at this point. That's the next step that we, this would be the next step that we would actually go into is okay. after we determined what location that best suits them and their family. They're rustic. Right. We would, you know, choose that rustic location, like the wide open space as we uh -huh. talked about. And then... We will go into our website. E we, we also have our website. I'm going to cut away for just a second and say we have four different sites on our main site. Okay. So we have a family site, a children's site, a newborn site, and a senior site. Okay. So when a client is going in to look through our website, they aren't looking through babies and families and seniors to, to get to find, what they want. Yeah. To find the family information. So we have those segmented just like we do the studio. So, um, but we do have these client links on everything. Okay. So on the website, right in the middle, and we t show them this on the website where they're here. Uh, if they go to clients, the very first item on this drop down menu is your home and essential to, like I said, the session itself, as well as the order appointment. Um, we'll go in and show them that we have a link here that shows the pro select software that we mm -hmm. use, um, and tell them we'll be able to show them to scale on the wall uh -huh. exactly what the portrait's going to look like. We tell them to send us an image from their home. Actually, we recommend a few spaces they have in mind because we may want to do a collection of images on one wall and, and a main piece on another. Uh, and we have some, a few little guidelines on here so that someone's not sending us an image of just a painted wall. We want to <laughs> be able to see the room view and make sure that the portrait's going to complement well. So we have those few little things stand back in the room, try to shoot as straight on as uh -huh, possible. Uh -huh. And then we use Wufu, um, Wufu.com to build these forms and create these links in our site so they can actually go in and fill out their name, their phone number, give us a reference measurement, or do a, a piece of paper in their image, an uh -huh. eight and a half by 11 uh -huh. that we can And they can upload to. that directly there? And they upload it directly to our site by just clicking browse. Oh, neat. So those will send them to us and then we can load them in with their image files. Do you have problems session. with people not doing that or not getting you images? Like I said, I tell them it helps me with the session. That helps tremendously. The eight and a half by 11 piece of paper helps with them not feeling like they need to be doing measurements and uh -huh, all of those uh -huh. things. Uh, so that has that has helped get these images to us. We also offer our clients for me to go out to their home and shoot for them okay. um, before the session that I can come out and give them some suggestions and get the images for them. Very cool. So uh, that's worked out well for us too when the client's not sure about. But if I if I was sitting here in your you know pre consultation room mm -hmm. as a client and wanted my family photographed, you would be showing me this website and saying, "Hey, go here and upload you know fill this information out and upload an image so that we can better shoot your session." Is that the yes. is that what okay? That's what we do. I do give them other other options. You can also email it to us if that's easier, or mm -hmm. you can text me. Here's my cell phone number if that's nice. easy. 
just take it on your phone and text it to me. <laughs> so we great. give them several ways to be able to get those home just images to, to us, whatever they're most comfortable with. Yeah. Some clients aren't as computer savvy, some aren't as phone savvy. So we give them options um, to be able to get those images to us. So that's the first thing we talk about is the your home. We start the base right there mm -hmm. once we've determined a location. Um, our studio policies is next on the list and we just have them log in. I'll just pop in there real quick. And these are just our general information, our session fee, our student, you know, our special retouching request, mm -hmm. our you know, proofing processes, our no shows, those types of things. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to go into too much detail with them here. We give them a little overview, just like I said to you, mm -hmm. and ask them that they just fill this out when they have a chance at home to read through them. Mm -hmm. And if they have any questions, let us know. The two that I point out, it's right here toward the end, the copyright and the usage. Uh -huh. I tell them these are the most important items on here. Uh -huh. We tell them that we, we hold the copyrights. We do not sell copyrights to images. And the usage allows me to put samples in the studio or, mm -hmm. or you know, images on the website. So that's very important for us to get this from them so that mm -hmm. we can do that. Um, down on these two little forms right here, they can put their minors' names. Mm -hmm. And then on the next one is the primary or parent or guardian. Mm -hmm. They sign those for us. Um, and the next one that I want to talk about is the risk and confidentiality agreement. Sounds really scary. It does. We <laughs> say that to our clients. We know it sounds really scary, but it's not. And we let them know that this is, we work with a lot of private properties. Uh, some of our fields, we've got contracts with the landowners. And in order for us to be able to go to these locations and get these contracts with landowners, they want to make sure they have absolutely no responsibility for us being out there, number one. Number two, they want to make sure that the clients aren't going to be showing up out there at some other time to have a bonfire, to go <laughs> fishing at their pond. Or, yeah. um, so that's part it's of what... to protect the landowner. Yes. And so and whenever we approach a landowner about using their land, this is one of the first things out of my mouth. We have our own liability insurance. I can provide you with coverage of, with a certificate of coverage for your address that shows that I've got myself covered, my clients covered, my equipment covered. You are at no risk whatsoever and that we have our clients fill out these forms before we will ever take them to a location. Photographers don't do this. No, they don't. Why um, not? They trespass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people don't think about it. And there's so many things about going out to, you know, open fields are, are very popular. Uh -huh. um, and just because there's not a fence around it doesn't mean someone doesn't own it. And there's not a risk of someone being fined for trespassing or mm -hmm. in Oklahoma or some other places shot on mm -hmm. site. Uh, so we, we do make sure that we get all of these things taken care of in the beginning. My liability insurance has every address of locations that we go um, through my business owner's you know, policy mm -hmm. and everything. Um, and then we, of course, let our clients know part of this form says you're choosing a location that you know, is not manicured. They don't spray for bugs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for going out in the woods, mm -hmm. there could be You could ticks. get hurt. You know, you could, yes, there's going to be sticks and thorns and, and things like that. So we, we let them know if you choose this location, there is a slight risk involved mm -hmm. um, going there mm -hmm. and that the landowner has no... Uh, is not liable. Is not liable. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. So having all those ducks in a row are really important and then having the client understand that not only do we have this in place for their protection and, and to let them know what's up, um, but also we just want to make sure that they're, um, they know the location that they're choosing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's, it's, it's protection for you too, in mm -hmm. case they should get hurt on that land. Yes. There's protection for us built in and the confidentiality part of that, we explain to our clients that we work really hard at finding confidential locations, places that we can take them where nobody else is. We're not going to show up at a park where there's you know, photographers everywhere. We want somewhere where they can go, feel comfortable, enjoy the session and not have people walking through their shots. And, mm -hmm. and so we tell them, we keep these, we keep these kind of on the down low and yeah. we ask that they don't tell anyone. Um, we also don't meet our clients at any of the locations directly unless it's a public place. Uh, we always have them meet us at least a couple miles down the road for the session and they follow us. Interesting. And they leave and we follow them out. Interesting. So. Well, it also keeps their portrait unique. I yes. mean, they won't have anything like everyone else does. Exactly. And mm -hmm. we're constantly scouting. We're constantly scouting for locations and getting those, those things together. So getting those landowner permissions, though, is just so important because a lot of permit fees continue to go up mm -hmm. as, you know, people are not paying attention to those types of things. Well, and then your respect as a photographer in the community just does nothing but increase. Yes. It really does. Very cool. So, well, let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So we talked about the forms that we have online and the two different very important forms. Now for our newborns, we don't have them obviously sign that <laughs> second portion. Um, or if we're going to somewhere like Philbrook Museum, which is a beautiful manicured location that is a public 
place. Mm -hmm. We won't have them sign that second one. It's only for places that we're going that are out in the woods or on private property. Private property, mm -hmm. yeah. So I just want to go back up to that little clients tab. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we've got some general questions here, our hours, you know, mm -hmm. just basic information, things like that, uh, that we recommend they read in their own time, just mm -hmm. uh, general questions they'd mm -hmm. like answered. Uh, the what to wear ta section, um, we recommend to our clients that Bottoms they start. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. We actually ask them, do you have more warm tones or more cool tones in your home? Are you more blues and grays? Are you more, you know, creams and, and tans? And based on what they tell me, I say, this is a great place to start. Now you can go from here, but this is a great place to start. And we have the two different tones. We tell them we don't want them to look like a team. Uh, mm -hmm. So we recommend not doing all the same shade of a color if, if possible. Sometimes they do, but this is a good starting place. Um, and you can see here, we show that style is important. We uh -huh. don't want everyone to show up in the same polo shirt. Yes. Um, we'd rather them mix it up a little bit, show some style, show some personality, but within the same tone that they choose. And then of course the bottoms, keeping it all, all the same tone, but still different style. And then we talk about accents. What color pops do you have in your home? Teals, reds, mm -hmm. yellows. Mm -hmm. And then we have examples on here of how to add those accents in and um, how to bring color tones together mm -hmm. to tie it into a family portrait where it complements cool. their home, but they still have personality. They don't look too matchy-matchy uh -huh. and um, it, it doesn't feel quite so planned. Uh -huh. This feels so much about client education. Yes. Just <laughs> really teaching them what's right and what's not. Yes. Powerful yeah. stuff. And, and they, I think they pick up on the fact that we want this to be special, as flawless as possible. Yeah. And, and really the best portrait that they can possibly have at the end of the experience. Mm -hmm. So we do spend a lot of time with each of our clients mm -hmm. and we go through this process. Um, I'm gonna go back up to the, the top here real quick. Um, so we do have two more little things on here. Uh, there's a friends and family after their order is completely done, retouched, we can put those online for friends and family with password protected and a copyright logo on it. Um, but that's for after they've completed all their decisions. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be located on that tab? Yes. We do often get the question, can you just put them online first? Yeah. We tell them that honestly, we've, we've tried that in the past um, to let clients kind of look through first and they always change their minds when they see them on the main screen mm -hmm. because when they can compare and they can zoom and they can see different expressions, it, it, they change their minds. Yeah. So it's really pointless and it's a waste of time for them uh -huh. um, to try to do that before coming in, that they need to come in, make those main decisions here and then that, that online thing is just down the road. That's it's just we do that later. It's just, <laughs> it's just it's, it's a side item. So, and the last thing with Wufu, again, we have a little Your Experience form. Um, we tell them we'd love to hear about the whole process. If there's anything that they loved, anything that they wish that we offered, anything that they would love to see us start doing. One of those mm -hmm. was uh, destination sessions, and we've just started doing those this year. A client had recommended it and asked for it, and we did some beach portraits this Very year. Cool. So, so cool. it's a great little tool for us and a way they can give us feedback. Nice. So, so they see all this on mm -hmm. this website here, you know, sitting in the hot seat and then they can go home and look at it again. So Correct. they have time to spend with the stuff and really think about what they're gonna be wearing, et cetera, et cetera. Ex exactly, and I offered all my clients, if you'd like to lay all the clothes out yeah. on the floor, on the bed or something and, and shoot it and send us an email and ask our opinion, we'd be happy to you know, let uh -huh. you know, maybe, maybe a jacket with that or yeah. maybe put a scarf on. Or, yeah. um, so they know we're very invested in, uh -huh. in this whole process with them. So now do you talk about products that the client might want during the pre-session consultation? We do, first we get them excited about the session <laughs> and suck them in first, and right? we plan it all. <laughs> we, we get them excited. We get it all planned, and then pricing is actually something we briefly cover. Um, we we sort of we have a very small little pricing guide here mm -hmm. at the studio. We just briefly touch on these are what we do for our clients. Mm -hmm. We do a signature piece. You know, oftentimes we'll do a collection. We do an album for every client because that's how you get your favorites. Uh, we recommend albums to our clients so that they don't have five by sevens all over the house mm -hmm. that end up in a drawer mm -hmm. down the road because they have no way of updating. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a lot of albums for our clients and we have a lot of benefits to those like Facebook sharing after the fact of those images. And mm -hmm. um, so we kind of touch on all of those items of things that they're going to want to purchase when they come back in and what to keep in mind and be ready for, mm -hmm. for the session. We tell them we'll show them around 40. Most people can narrow it down to around 20 or 30, mm -hmm. and our albums include 20, so they Perfect. can add in additionals <laughs> if they'd like to. Um, but we tell them that's that's pretty much what everybody does, mm -hmm. and that is what everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing mm -hmm. when you say something over and it over, it happens. happens. <laughs> 
Um, and so that's how we, we just touch on pricing. We really try, unless they're really, and a lot of times they're really not as interested as people may think they are. Um, and so we just kind of touch on that, answer any questions they have. We talk about the different styles that we carry mm -hmm. um, and what we might recommend for their style. Uh, if they're more traditional, maybe the traditional framed or a canvas. If they're mm -hmm. more edgy and eclectic, maybe a metal type of portrait or something or an acrylic. Mm -hmm. uh, those things are really, uh, that's an opportunity at that point uh -huh. to get them thinking and planning for the order appointment. So how do you wrap up a consultation? Where does it go from there? After that, we go into Successor. We use Successor for all of our scheduling. Uh -huh. um, I can actually pull that up here. Um, um, this is where we do all of our client information. This is where we do all of our financial information, our products, our pricing. All of this goes into Successware. Um, and so this is our scheduling software. We'd pull up the client at that time and start looking at dates. So, for example, if they wanted a fall session and they wanted a Saturday, we would jump in and look at Saturday. And Saturday is not an cool. option. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we do have, it looks like, an available session, you know, here and here. And that would work for the location that we've chosen or how free are you during the weekdays? We generally start with that before we fully jump into success where we say, yeah. how flexible are you on the weekdays? Because if we can do a weekday, we have a lot more options. If we're looking for a Saturday, we may be looking a few months out. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll go, I think we can make a weekday work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, depending on that time, and then we've got everything set up I'm not sure that we 100% did this correctly, but we actually have everything set up over here where you can see the different locations. So we uh -huh. can easily quick see it. For example, here we've got a senior at Philbrook down by the water um, or over here. These are, we've got them color coded for different mm -hmm. appointments so we can tell at a quick glance. Within these, we actually can send um, in the auto emails, you can set up where they're going to meet you and set those up for when you're going to send it out. So once we get it on the scheduler, we tell them, I'm gonna send you an email today um, with all the details. So you can just write that down when you get that and please let us know if you get it because it has some important information in it. Mm -hmm. Inside that reminder has the reminder about the policies, the reminder about your home with links. It also has an address of where they're gonna meet us and my cell phone number should anything come up. Um, at that time we also talked a little bit about weather conditions and how we deal with those and mm -hmm. what we'll do in the case of rain. Um, but we set these up and you can see we, we did one a week before the session and the day of her consultation mm -hmm. um, so that they get all that information when they leave and it's um, nice and tidy and taken care of. So wow. all wow. of that's automated too so it saves us a lot of time. A lot of time and energy. Mm -hmm. You are so organized. <laughs> I'm we, uh, sitting here going, wow, I need to get my act together. <laughs> it's taken so a lot awesome. of trial and error to get us to this point, but it, it does make a huge difference um, in getting all those. We'll also go ahead and schedule their order appointment at that time and remind mm -hmm. them what we're gonna do with the order. So overall, as far as consultations go, mm -hmm. if you had to tell a photographer the most important aspects of it, big picture wise, what would you say? In terms of what the big picture of the consultation, of the consultation is? is and how important it is and, and why do them and what they've done for your business. Without them, the client has no expectations. They, they don't know what, what they're getting into. They don't know what you expect from them. They don't know you. They haven't met you. Mm -hmm. it, it leaves for awkwardness for the session. It leaves for questions and confusion, which usually can lead to an upset client if they mm -hmm. feel like their expectations are going one way. They think that you're going to put them all online. They think that they're mm -hmm. going to make decisions that way. They're going to, you know, you're going to give them a disc. I mean, they have no <laughs> idea what to expect if you haven't sat down and had a conversation with them and gotten them excited about their session and walked them through it. Um, and now the way that we do business is different than works for everybody else. Our business model is different. Mm -hmm. And, and so course. I'm not saying this is how everyone should work. If they're, if someone's a high volume studio, this does not it's necessarily work for them. Or if they're a contract senior photographer where they have, you know, sessions back to back and, and things like that. But for us, we want to establish lifelong relationships with our clients. We want to watch each of their babies come through here mm -hmm. and their senior portraits all come through here and see them. And we don't actually work with our clients that often. We work with them at major moments in life. So mm -hmm. we may see a client you know, at one stage and not see them for another three years or four years until their mm -hmm. next major moment. Uh, so we do things differently. If somebody does a lot of, um, you know, miniature sessions or they do a lot of theme sessions like holidays and then this type of model would not work for them. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm not advocating this is the way to do it, but it's what we've done for, 
for my business and yeah. it works well for us. It's worked really well for you. Thank you so much for sharing all this. It's been amazing information. Mm -hmm. It's so fun to see how organized you are. And you've, <laughs> you've inspired me and I'm sure along well, with thanks. a lot of other people as well. I'm glad I can, glad I can share. Thanks.